What was your life like before you began practicing meditation mindfulness? Honestly, it wasn't bad <laughs> until it got really bad. And what I mean by really bad is like, oh my gosh, the business was failing. My family was in shambles because we had a family business that was being ripped apart. Well, not really ripped apart. We were just three years of decline. It was just like a lot of turmoil. And so there was like a lot of greed, a lot of pride. And we got our minds off of like helping students and we got our minds on money and position. So I had panic attacks, like three of them in the same year. And I thought it was respiratory issues, but I just went to the doctor and he's like, no, you have panic attacks. So anyways, it's not bad until it gets really bad. So now on a calm sea, if everything's calm, you're on the beach and just hanging out, then yeah, I mean like life is okay. So mindfulness and meditation really, really helps put your mind in perspective when you go through these high stressful periods. Cause then you can take a step back behind the veil and you don't have to have your face pushed up against the glass. You can take a step back and you can ascend to what the untethered soul talks about. And it's, dude, it's, it's amazing because you can be the observer of the storm instead of being in the storm. And so you can separate that and segment that. And it just, it's life changing. It's just the three degrees off, but that's completely life changing. Meditation mindfulness transformed a specific challenge or aspect of my life. Honestly, the biggest thing is how I deal with my problems now. I don't react immediately. Sure, sometimes you mess up and, you know, I, but I would say 20% of the time, I'm not perfect. And it's, a, you know, it's a um, daily practice, right? You have to, it's like growing a muscle. Like you have to work out that muscle and I get lazy on my mindfulness or my meditation. But I think the biggest aspect is reacting to problems immediately and just letting it get under your skin. I don't do that anymore as much. I would say 80% of the time I don't. Sometimes I do mess up, but the reaction part, it seems like more delayed and you can observe how you're feeling instead of jumping into the storm. You can observe that storm, specifically with problems in relationships and business and a lot of things and you can choose where your focus goes. Is it gonna to go to the good parts or is it gonna to go to the bad parts? Um, and one of the things I've noticed is I can observe my patterns. And so for, I, I know I'm getting to a bad pattern if every morning I wake up and I have this complaining and blaming mantra in my head and you have to very quickly focus on gratitude in the morning and then mindfulness. One unexpected benefit of meditation and mindfulness that I've experienced. Honestly, it's hard to explain, but it's kind of like bliss. It's kind of like nothing can touch you. Nothing can just penetrate that barrier, that fortress. It's really interesting. The best way I can describe it is after, so the Dalai Lama says 50 hours of guided or regular practice will get you to that threshold of, of mindfulness or that threshold that you're supposed to, the therapeutic range. And I can honestly tell you, after I use the float tank, I try to do like 50 hours in the month. It's so like two hour floats. I only do this like twice a year. The best way I can describe it is having a huge like lake. And let's just say a storm is just raging on the top of the lake, just all this huge waves and rain and just turmoil and lightning. But meanwhile, you can be at the bottom of the lake, meters just deep, and nothing has really changed. It's just really peaceful and calm. So life can be just happening on top, but you can just choose and practice. It's not even a choice. It's like a, a mental muscle, really, just exercising that muscle and just going down to the bottom of that lake. And you can have peace in the middle of that storm because you're not the storm. You're the observer of the storm, and you are not your problems. You're just the observer of those problems. That is the biggest thing I learned.